So today I'm sharing with you my seven best golf tips for swinging on a single plane. And I'm gonna go through them uh, one after another. And so it's very important that you get all seven steps correct so that you can play your best golf ever. And that's my goal, helping my clients play better golf as quickly as possible until they're playing the best golf they've ever played. In most cases, this can happen very quickly as long as we follow the proper steps. My first tip and most important is learning to set up in a position where your wrists are uncocked or in ulnar deviation. So if you hold a club up and you just do this, hold it up like that and let it do that, let the weight of the club and gravity bring it to here, you're in what's called ulnar deviation. The wrist is completely uncocked. Here's a little bit cocked, here's fully cocked. So uncocked as well as adding the trailing hand to the club, fully uncocked position. The reason this is really important is that an impact every golfer is gonna have the club in this position or this orientation uh, to the arms. And if you're setting up in a position that has the wrist slightly cocked and then it impacts it's uncocked, you'll see the club head here is moving away from me. The average would be about four to five inches. And that's why most people starting out hitting a lot of fat shots, thin shots, uh, topping the ball, slicing, hooking, is because they're having trouble compensating for that change. Obviously the top players in the world that you see on TV uh, have hit millions of golf balls and learned to get that timing just right. Uh, for you who want to improve quickly, uh, as quickly as possible, it's really critical to get this element uh, correct. So learn to simply set up, raise the hands up, and you're in this position here. And that's really the most important step. So please, if you haven't already, uh, please click the subscribe button below this video uh, to subscribe as I release new videos. Hit the bell to accept notifications so you know every time a new video is released. I look forward to helping you improve your game. The second tip uh, deals with spine angle and that's the amount that we bend forward uh, at setup. And what I like to do with people, and this is really important for learning to swing the club on a single plane, is that it matches the position that you're in at impact. And so what you can do, and, and uh, it's really easy to do nowadays with some of the free apps, is make a video of yourself from this vantage point uh, down the line. And if you stop at an impact, you'll see the amount of forward spine bend that you have. And then we just wanna set up with that. A lot of people will force themselves into a position that's very uncomfortable. Uh, some uh, try to bend 40, 45 degrees forward. And the problem is it, that it's not sustainable through impact. And so you end up uh, straightening up and you're in a much more upright spine angle at impact. So set up with that angle and that's what I do. And that also puts the club then on its impact plane much easier. Uh, I see a lot of people bending too much. They're on a much steeper plane through impact. So set up on that steeper plane, set up more upright to match where you are naturally at impact. And that's the easiest way to customize this simple concept to fit your game. And that's what allows for the fastest improvement possible. So along those same lines, uh, tip three uh, deals with finding your distance from the ball for any golf club and also for different lies. So if you're on an uneven lie, I would give the same advice because if the ball is above our feet, uh, typically you'll find you'll need to stand farther away and if the ball is below the feet, closer. And so what I would have you do is simply set up and make a couple practice swings back and through. And that's showing you exactly, you'll notice I hit the ground the same place every time. And that's the ideal distance from the ball for me uh, with the nine iron. And so if I took a seven iron, it'd be a little bit farther away, a five would even farther. Uh, but we're really learning there uh, through these practice swings exactly where the club naturally wants to make contact. Instead of following some formula uh, that tells you exactly you should stand so and so far away, there's no way a formula can tell you what's ideal for you uh, because we're all different. And so some of you need to stand more upright and then you'll be closer. Some of you are shorter uh, or bend more forward and you'll be farther away. You can do that again with any golf club. Keep it simple, a few practice swings, you're good to go. So the fourth tip for learning to swing on a single plane 
is simply learning how to orient your hands on the golf club that gives you the fastest improvement possible. When making some swings, if you see your golf ball curving to the right as a right-handed golfer, uh, what we would do is take the leading hand and move it a little bit over on the grip into what's called the stronger position. So the thumb, the hand and the thumb would be rotated behind away from the target that way and that's a stronger position more of the back of the hand is here towards the camera and if the ball is hooking or curving to the left as a right-handed golfer uh, in a lot of cases we will uh, weaken the grip and move it the other way so the back of the hand would be more towards the target now that's a simplified version uh, of what I look at I'm also looking at impact if the ball is hooking I would also add that I would try to fix that early release first and see then if the grip orientation fits. People working with my easy to follow learning system often start lagging better and having better uh, having more lag through impact with the hands leading more and then it's necessary to adjust the grip to a little bit stronger position because they're getting the hands leading and better body turn but the club face is open so strengthening the grip makes it square and that's what we're looking for also uh, typically uh, you would have to move closer to the ball as you develop more lag so we want to be able to customize the grip on the fly so that you can play your best golf possible every time you go out so my fifth tip for learning to swing on a single plane uh, very simple deals with the takeaway how we take the club back away from the ball and uh, when talking about single plane, a lot of people are confused about what it is, but it's really a very simple concept. This golf club moves on a plane, a plane of movement, and a single plane would have it on very close to the same path back and through. If I had the club, if this was a big tabletop here, the club would stay on it the whole way from here to here and to here. Most people in golf are setting up here and then they swing up and they're on a higher plane and they swing through on another plane. So it looks like this here and they come through that way. And some that are even uh, attempting uh, to swing on a single plane strangely take the club under the plane immediately in the backswing, which just shows a lack of understanding what the arms and body need to do working together in sync in the golf swing that as I'm turning back, the arms are lifting the club up. And so it actually moves the club right on plane and it comes right back down that plane. If you're taking the club to the inside, the problem is uh, in about 95% of the cases, the people come back into the ball from inside and the club comes in this way, which is gonna push the ball to the right, but most people then are forced to compensate and flip the hands to try to get the ball to the target. In most cases, they're not even aware of it. They just know that they miss the ball a lot to the right, um, and then sometimes they hook it uh, to the left. They hit a lot of shots fat. And so we wanna avoid that. And the easiest way to make clean, consistent golf shots, straight back on plane, straight down on that same single plane, and straight through finishing on a single plane. And so if you've been taking it to the inside, I would then advise you taking it, having the feel that the club's going straight back and up to begin with and then checking it. Members of my online learning program can send in videos for me to review and then I guide you step by step on how to improve that. It's very inexpensive and allows you also to view my complete learning program. So it's really the easiest way if I coach you through it. Uh, you can do it in winter, spring, summer, fall. It doesn't matter. I have a lot of people doing a lot of my drills at home and that's really one of the best ways to improve. So a lot of people will improve significantly with the first five tips that I gave you. But to really take your game to the next level, we really, really need to improve impact and make impact uh, super consistent uh, so the club's moving properly as it reaches the ball. And the key to that, our sixth tip, is simply learning how to transition from backswing to through swing. And this is what develops lag, and it's part of what helps create a good impact. A transition alone isn't going to make it perfect, but uh, it's important. It's an important step without a proper transition. Learning great impact is going to be impossible. So 
Transition you should think of as the point the arms and club are going back and the body starts forward. So we want in this transition phase, the club would still be moving back. Yeah. The same as if you were throwing a ball, you would be stepping forward and start turning before the hand even started forward. So in my learning program on my website at setupforimpact.com, I teach you that starting with what's known as a wall drill. I'll have you turning, as you're turning back, you rotate through and the wrist then hinges and we rotate through to it till our hand is to the wall. And that's learning the transition. And then as I go into the drills, we're learning that same motion that it's just that motion. We have to repeat that over and over again. Most of you, it's something like this. And this is also a lot of people's concept that it's going here and then everything moves together. So a lot of people are practicing that motion and we actually need that. We need the body moving and starting first. So for my clients who are sending in videos for me to review, one thing I'm doing is I'll draw some lines on their legs when they're here and getting near the top of the backswing. And I wanna see movement there first before the club starts down. And so you can practice this at home. Just say I need to move the club back. And as I'm moving it back, I need to get the legs and body positioned for impact before the club gets there. As we know, if from the top, if we start here with the hands and don't give the body a head start, the club's gonna be there way too fast. So that leads into the seventh and final tip, and that's learning how to make perfect impact with the golf ball. And we need that transition that we talked about in the tip number six, and then understanding that, starting with a really short swing as we work on transition, we also have to learn then to hold this club back so that the hands can be leading as we go through impact. From my estimation, over 95% of golfers are releasing the club too early, and that's because the trailing hand is applying pressure trying to make the club head hit the ball. When in fact the top players, every one of them, has at impact a shaft lean, so the hands are forward and I'll put a couple pictures in here of the top players at impact. And you'll notice that their hands are forward in front of their leading leg at impact and the shaft is back. And you'll see even the trailing wrist here still hinged backwards. And so that goes against most of your concepts. And it, in a lot of cases, it's subconscious that we have to do that to hit the golf ball. There's no top player that does that. They may feel that. But if you look at them at impact, you'll see this. So it's super critical to learn this motion because what it does for you uh, very quickly, there's five key reasons that the hands and grip needs to lead the club head through impact. And it's simply that the club face when the hands are leading has less rotation through impact. You see it stays very square there through impact. It also creates here, what's known as a flat spot, the club comes in and glides along the ground, a nice flat, shallow spot there. Um, it also creates a straight impact, so the club is moving straight towards the target for this small space. And it also is what enables to hit the center of the face. So the club like this, if you put the ball on a countertop, you see the center of the ball is hitting the lower part of the face, tilt the club forward, and now it moves up towards the middle. Um, the last step, um, very important with the handle grip leading is that this creates parametric acceleration. It actually helps add club head speed. And you'll see if I'm swinging the club like a pendulum here, and then I pull up at the right time, say right here, it accelerates. And the part of pulling up is learning as part of creating these impact parameters that we need to be straightening the leading leg and rotating the body because that pulls the grip up. It keeps the club head from crashing into the ground. It helps straighten the path at impact and it builds club head speed. So the pulling up is what, what you see here as far as parametric acceleration. I just accelerated the club uh, without much effort. And so we want effortless power. We want to learn great impact. My drills on the website teach you how to do that step by step. 
and it's really it's really as simple as learning to do this first learning to move perfectly through impact so if you combine all the seven tips that I gave you here today uh, go through them step by step uh, make them your own so that's your own golf swing you're not copying anybody else it's a simple model to follow uh, it will fit any person it just needs to be customized that's what I do in my schools and my online learning program I guide you through step by step building a great easy to repeat golf swing with the goal being to help you play the best golf of your life and that's uh, accomplished uh, just all you have to do is send in some videos uh, follow my drills send in videos have me analyze them I'll analyze your swing and point you in the right direction for simple customizations and again if you haven't subscribed here please do so any questions or comments pop them in the box below and I look forward uh, to hearing from you. Have a great day and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.